Welcome everybody back to Veil of Sound, our regular Sunday interview. And um, yeah, it's it's one of those moments where, you know, being a journalist, you think like, okay, this is a cool thing. This is my first video interview with Colin from Amen Ra. But it's not the first interview that we've done. It's the third one already. <laughs> I've yeah. looked it up. So Colin, thanks for joining the show. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. Yeah always our pleasure or my pleasure i always like to talk to you it's always a nice conversation uh, no matter if it's written or in this case even a video interview uh first question colin where are we catching you right now where are you i'm living in a temporary place because i'm rebuilding my house oh i moved uh, i moved last weekend with my family so we're here camping for uh, in a smaller uh, studio for a while, okay. so I can add an extra floor to my house. Oh, that, okay, that's a lot of work. How yeah. long is it estimated to take? I assume half a year. This summer, uh, somewhere should be done. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, well, I'll I'll keep my fingers crossed. Uh, yeah. a, a colleague of mine did that a few years ago, and he spent. Uh, eight months living with his family at his parents house and afterwards they said look okay let's stay away for christmas you know yeah i can imagine yeah that <laughs> yeah um other question that we always like to ask is um are you having any kind of band merch shirt stuff anything that you want to show us that you want to pluck i always say please no pants that's the only thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't wear a lot of band merch, actually. Yeah. Except In general or your own? Uh, we wear our own, like, mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. And things that my friends give me. I have mm -hmm. a integrity merch and uh, and Dolce Scudder merch and, uh, yeah, lots of it. But, uh, yeah. I'm not wearing any for now. So uh, before wear. anybody asks what I am wearing, I'm wearing classical New York hardcore. And over the course of the interview at the end, you will also see why. Um, because I think many people forget Mr. Eckhout's roots. I am, I am. Uh, Colin, there are several things that we can and should talk about. Uh, a new record coming up, most yeah. important your participation in the movie and um, also a little bit about the US tour, which I think when this is published on May 19th, it's already over, isn't it? No, we're still, we'll still be in the States. I think 19th is our last show, I think, or the 18th. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Yeah. So if you're this, watching this Sunday morning, American time. Yeah. We're still time ready. for you. Um, no, but like talking a little bit about uh, like touring in general, um, maybe we start in like semi chronological order with the movie that you've done. Mm -hmm. Um, first of all, for all of us or for all those out there who have not heard about it yet, mm -hmm. um, maybe you can tell us a little bit what is the movie about, what is your part in it, yeah, and then we'll talk about how the collaboration happened. So, yeah, so, um yeah, I play I play a, a father of a troubled uh, child. I'm, I'm I play an abusive father. So the, mm. the the main character of the movie is my son Liam, who is um, uh, placed in um uh, in an institution okay, for mm. um beyond. I have explained it a lot in Dutch already, but not yet in English. So I'm I'm gonna have a lot of trouble finding my words. Um, so the Liam grows up in a troubled uh, household and gets into trouble himself, and he's placed in an institution where uh, the caretakers, the people who work there, try to 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 help him. And try to do uh, to the help to the best of their abilities, but um, uh, it's not always easy. And there's also uh, forms of abuse within that institution. So mm -hmm. it's, you follow you follow the kid 
uh, through that um, trajectory. Um, it's a very dark and um, harsh movie, but it's a realistic movie. It's based mm -hmm. on a novel written by Heert Tokon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Skunk, such as the movie. Uh, and that was based on real life uh, stories of uh, kids who found themselves uh, in inside of, of growing up inside of those institutions. So multiple parts of of um, of their stories are combined in in this movie. So it's based on on true stories, but it's a very harsh take on reality. But it's a it's a document of how it sometimes is in those cases. Um, yeah. yeah, and also, I've I've watched a few scenes that I was able to catch on the web. Um, I mean, unfortunately, it's becoming more and more of a, for lack of a better word, of a regular, or not regular, but like a a a less. A less surprising thing, let's put it like that. You know, like uh, abusive households are not diminishing, but unfortunately growing in number. How did that collaboration happen? How did did you become a part of a movie? Um, the director Kun Mortier contacted me and asked me if uh, I would I would be interested in in playing the role of the father in the movie. Uh, it immediately struck my interest because I'm a social worker uh, at heart. I, I, I study social work, so and I worked in a psychiatric uh, ward for a while. Uh, so I know um, how it is in, in those institutions sometimes. Um, and also, I really liked how, how he makes his movies. He's always very um, direct and has a more... A tendency to work with um, uh, darker themes, um, and uh, that's for me. That those were enough pieces of the puzzle to realize, like, okay, I need to do this um, and see where this leads me. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was a great experience. Um, I know that you're a father yourself, if I remember correctly. You also have twins or had twins at some point. You know, we're already grown up, as far as I remember, or like teenagers now. Mm -hmm. um, how how difficult was it for you to play a father that is very different from yourself, like completely different? Surprisingly easy, in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how come, but it was... I just focused on the task, you know, and tried to uh, portray as as um, as worthy as possible uh, the character that I was uh, implied to 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 play. So um, I clicked in and out of the 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 character each time. It, yeah, like I said, it was surprisingly easy in a way to. Uh, I approached it as a task, you know. I was there mm -hmm. to do a certain thing, and I tried to do it as good as I possibly could. Yeah, uh, it's probably also a role that you do not want to bring home, right? So you have to be able to click out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, of course. But I mean, on the movie set, there's so much, so many people around and and engaged in in making the movie. So you mm -hmm. you don't allow yourself to 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 drag. You just dive in there, do what you have to. And, uh, and Do then, you know anything about a possible international release? Will it be in theaters other than Belgium and Holland? Presumably, uh, but I have no uh, sight on the distribution of the movie and to what countries it is sold. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I know it's sold to South America, uh, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, when and where, I have no idea of uh, what's going to be the the future of of, of uh, the distribution. So, of course, if, if you want to find out more, of course, follow Colin on his own socials. Maybe also follow some of the other Amen Ra pages that there are out there. So you will be able, if there is a possible international release, just follow their pages. And if you need more information, we'll have the, the links to Colin's own uh, social media appearances uh, online. So you can just click on that and 
maybe through where find your way to it. Um, when we talk about film or movies or snippets of footage, that has always been in a way also part of the Amenra reality. You very often had teasers for your for your records. You had also videos for a few of the songs. When that happens, who comes up with those ideas? Do they come from within the band or do you then ask other people to do that? It depends. I mean, we have uh, such a large amount of, of uh, moving image already that uh, sometimes, most of the time, we try to keep it close to our, uh, our circle. And that is, it comes from within the band or it is uh, done by people extremely close to us or part of the crew or whatever. Um, like, uh, we also have the live visuals that we film. Um, Whenever we travel, we try to do some filming, um, but it depends, you know. I think it's uh, the video aspect of being in a band is uh, gets more and more weight these days, which is uh, an extra strain on a, on a, on a, on a band as well that you need to have visual uh, visuals accompanying your sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes it's hard, sometimes you have good ideas and sometimes you don't have, you don't really know what you want to get. So then you can count on the people whom you, mm. whom you respect and who you like their work, but we're not necessarily the, the, the band that just ask some, pay someone and ask them to do something random that works on the music, you know, mm. it needs to be funded in, um, the essence needs to be the core of, of, of what the song is about or what the band is about. Mm. Uh, it depends whom, 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 whom crosses our path as well. You know, sometimes you, you meet someone who works, who is a very good videographer and, and, and clicks with, with you aesthetically. And it depends. We have different angles, a bit of everything. But we we always decide it has to make sense. It has to feel right. What also struck me very, very early on when thinking about Amen Ra, and it's something that I still find to this day, I think that Amen Ra is one of those rare, really immersive bands because you provide your fans with a lot of material a lot of also sometimes very different merchandise and um by also founding your own church of ra it is one or amen ra is one of those bands where it feels as if you're getting as if you're really getting the total package um do you think that is important for a band like that you know like a band who is also looking at the holistic and ritualistic aspect of music? I know it's important for us. I can't mm -hmm. speak for another band, you know. Mm -hmm. I just think it's uh, artistically more uh, gratifying if you have mm -hmm. your hand in everything that surrounds your music, you know. Mm -hmm. It's what we decided in the early days that this needed to be more than just sound and 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 music so mm -hmm. it was very organically uh, a decision made that that uh, whatever we could put our hands on and 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 make it ours we would you know and we would try to build something that is an auditive and a visual world around the thing mm. um there is also a visual teaser for the upcoming record. It's a teaser of roughly a minute length. And more or less, you see somebody kneeling um, or nearly being kneeling and bent over more or less naked in a field. I'm not going to ask if that is you, because that is not important. But to me, um, it seems as if you're trying to um, strip man 
to its barest minimum. Mm -hmm. Was that an intention, like like showing man and its? Yeah, that's where you, that's where I I think it's good to start from when you start building a piece uh, of a piece of work, a piece of music. I think that's cool that you go to the to your core and what what drives you, what what um, yeah. If you go to your um, most essential being, mm -hmm. that's where the important stories are told you know mm -hmm. so it's the moments where you're naked bare naked and on your yeah. knees in the dirt that the wisest life lessons are taught you know mm -hmm. it's what you carry with you and that's what i try to work with and analyze through music and and text and words you know i try to work with that and from that situation and that's mm -hmm. like a, a visual representation of that moment, pretty much mm -hmm. the start of a new piece of work, I think. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you personally to have these solo endeavors, which are not on a regular basis? Sometimes there are several years between them. But how important is it for you to have those very personal moments of when it's really stripping everything down to Colin? I don't know. I don't know. I think um, it started off as a as a study more to see if if it is important for me, you know, and what that story would be and, and if something would come out of me when I'm on my own. Um, but uh, I don't. I don't know if they're important. You know, everything we do is important in that moment that you make it. You know, you try to. It's like writing a diary. You know, to talk in uh, cliches. Mm -hmm. Just try to tell your story in a in a in a sincere way and in a direct way. Um, but um, yeah, it's not intended to be something um, that pops up regularly or whatever it's it's this part has been recorded for a long while and then suddenly i felt like okay now is the time to to let it free to set mm -hmm. it free and um it's it's interesting what i do realize and what i have been able to conclude the last years is that being on my own creating is not my preference Mm -hmm. My my core love is is within Amen Ra and and being able to create with my with my friends uh, and my brothers. That's where my strength is, I think, because uh, I feel the support and I feel the the backup from everyone, and everyone puts its weight on the table, and we move from there. Um, it's uh, it's more stressful, I think, when you're on your own, and it's uh, it feels endless. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that it's stressful because a lot of artists, of course, say a very different thing. You know, they say like, okay, now I can do whatever I want to. Yeah. That at also at the same time, it basically implies that one of the core elements of Colin van Eckhout is collaborative work. Yeah. But I mean, I can I can make things on my own, but it, I don't necessarily feel more gratified by it or, oh, I've been able to to, to, to say my thing without interference. Mm -hmm. I believe that inter interference or, or collaborating is also able to bring out the best of you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, especially if you're an... Um, insecure person or you're uncertain and you doubt a lot of stuff sometimes it's easier to work with other people who can who, whom you can lean on and who, whom you can trust their judgment and things as well um yeah would you describe yourself as a as a doubting person yeah of course in a way I'm, i i really know what uh, i i have a certain vision that i always follow Mm -hmm. And I feel a drive and I always know where we're going, but I always hesitate if it's good enough. That's the that's the essence of the thing. That is also doubt. And if you're on your own and you, you make things, 
it's hard to judge that if, if it's good enough. Now as well, I always need someone to tell me like, it's really good. You should, you know, you should release it. And then mm. I always start thinking about releasing it in a way. Yeah. Mm. Is that also the reason why the new record, the release took a lot of time between being produced and, and, and recorded and now released? Yeah. 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 As well. I, I park it somewhere. I'm never really hasty in things. I always mm -hmm. like, I, I always like to see it as a, a fruit that needs to ripen sometimes, especially if you need, if you need to find a visual things to represent the, the, the piece of music, then sometimes it's good to give it its time to, and I listen to it and see what images come to mind and what, um, what seeps through your uh, imagination so you can start working on the on the visual aspect on the artwork on the video or things like that let's focus a little bit on the musical side of calvary <clears throat> um musically it's less amenra and more lustmort or to stay in in the realms of of the church of Ra, uh, it's more um, a syndrome. Um, so how how did it come that you like constructed and composed this piece of music? Was there like how how did you find the balance for it? Um, I liked uh, I my my main instrument is a hurdy gurdy, so I. Uh... I dwell within the drone uh, realm, um, yet it's with an uh, with an acoustic um, instrument um, that I then uh, loop and put through processed um, pedals, effect pedals, and stuff. Um, but um, I just like the 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 droning contemplative. Uh, endless loops of things mm -hmm. so it, it gives you the time to uh to follow a certain wave and dive within yourself um, mm -hmm. um and um i think what inspired me was the the french artist i i will call him uh, jean marie massou i saw a, do a documentary called uh, le plan pays of the man And he is, uh, he was a, a recluse, the, some someone who lived on his land in uh, in France, in the in the region called Lot. And that was a guy who would I, what I would assume, is that it was a man that was living within um, some type of psychosis of what they refer to as a psychosis. He had his uh, parallel um, reality. Um, so he he was expecting he was functioning within the end days and he was um, wandering through his big um, uh, land and he was diving uh, he was uh, delving tunnels he was making tunnels and he was excavating uh, big uh, stones and rocks uh, he was painting on them and he was also recording his voice while he was singing and recording sounds. Um, and that inspired me that the man was um, making music for the sake of making music mm. while he was doing his thing, he, as he was excavating uh, the rocks out of out of uh, his earth to build the tunnels. He was making sounds with them, and he was recording it. And he, but he was all he was doing all of that without the function of making an album or being popular or growing an audience or whatever mm -hmm. so i think that was really what what inspired me and what i thought was really interesting that you had the core essence of, of musical use there you know he, he did it because he felt he had to you know and uh, and that inspired me so And of course, at the same time, without him wanting or thinking about publication, he, by singing along to it, by making music to it, 
he indirectly turned all his work into some kind of ritual, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, again, is one of those core elements of your body of work. So it's interesting that you once again unearth stories that fit so perfectly um, to, to the whole body of what you've been doing over the last 15, 20 years. Um, you have been talking about like he did it for himself. He also made music just for himself. Um, of course, it also in some ways reflects on his own personal condition, right? Um, is that something that still drives you after all these years, the human condition, you know, what we are capable of, what we're, where we've been, where we might be going? Yeah, of course. I think that's what should drive all of us in a way, you know. And see where our flaws are as humanity. You know, where do we, where do where do we draw? Uh, where do we um, uh, drive ourselves further of that essence? And that is mm -hmm. trying to, in my opinion, that should be trying to coexist in a in a in a in a peaceful way. Mm -hmm. That's what every human strives for—a form of rest. You know, and instead of pushing each other out of the way all the time while trying so, someone's rest doesn't necessarily need to be someone else's burden, you know. Um, mm. Anyway, the human condition, yeah, I, I, I question, I, I, I see, I analyze, and I question, and I, and I, and I work from there, you know. I see what, what the, where it takes me. And I try to learn from it and, and take use from it to make myself what I would assume and hope to be a better human being mm. while doing so. You know. The record is called Calvary. And if I understand that little bit of Flemish that I've been hearing over the last couple of years, that basically is the Flemish word for, for cavalry, right? It has nothing to do with the... Uh, with, uh, army thing kind of mm -hmm. it's not it's not the the, the calvary berg is 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 the flemish uh word for uh golgotha that is the 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 mountain where jesus the mountain was, where jesus died was supposedly be, uh, crucified um and that was also uh the place where i went to school in my small village in uh in belgium there is a, a calvary mountain mm -hmm. On that on, on that hill, more it's not a mound, but it's a hill. Uh, my school was there, so I went to school there until I was twelve years old. So every morning I had to climb the that mountain figuratively, mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, that's what we all do during our lifetime. You know, we all climb our our hill, uh, mm -hmm. eventually towards our demise. You know. Um, yeah. So that's where the Calvary uh, aspect came from. Yeah. Can I nevertheless ask if your music also, in a way, has some kind of helping intention behind it that you maybe want to help other people with it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially I, in the first place, I want to help myself. I want to help myself understand things that, that, mm -hmm my mind and that keep me busy and and uh, like i said like i just i'm also trying to figure out this life and uh, mm -hmm. and trying to guide the, the the people who like my my children through that thing called life and and the thing the more i think the more i question it and i try to analyze how it works and and how i think everything uh clicks together um i think my music helps me doing that mm. it helps me obviously with the with the the typical trauma moments you know and 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 moments of loss and and um to give those a, a space and place in my in my life and in my mind 
Um, yeah, but also you, you you also think about things like love and you 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 analyze what is love and the different forms of love and and uh, the love you feel for your friends and and things like that. Anyway, so it helps myself in the first place, and through the years, it has been very gratifying to see that some other people can draw something from it that gives them hope or strength or uh, even if it's only a small sign of, of uh, connection or recognition. Um, it, it's a very nice take and a very nice uh, compliment to receive, you know, so that's a, a very nice side effect almost of, of me exploring myself. But it never puts any, or by now, it has not put any kind of pressure on you that there are people who follow you and who are looking at you and your music for help. Yeah, very much. You know, you you should not um, take expectations of other people in 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 uh, in mind, uh, but you automatically do, and you fear disappointing people whom you might have touched in the past and mm. things like that. You automatically uh, question yourself. You're not as free anymore as you you think you are, you know, or you would like to be. Because I know how important it is sometimes when you I had I have it too that in a certain phase in life I connect extremely strong to a band or to some albums that a band has made, and if that band uh, quits or if that band's band decides to change direction or or if that band turns out to be a bunch of assholes, I mean it's like you almost have to grieve for the loss because yeah. it yeah. seems like it's it it became a part of you you know and mm. and that's what i try to protect that we you know that we don't disappoint anyone or we don't mm. take a part away from someone uh, mm. that's what we try to by staying um true to to ourselves and and trying just to, to work from what we feel we need we need at in that time you know does that also mean that by now that process of creation has become more i don't want to say difficult but a little bit more time consuming that you have to be a little maybe even a little bit more careful of every little detail yeah yeah it it, it feels like it's getting it more difficult every album you make feels like it's getting more difficult because you want to stay true to your your yourself as a band but you also want to evolve and then you uh try to um keep a hold on yourself to not evolve too much you know to that you draw away from the essence why someone might have connected with you in the first place and uh, it's a constant uh, balancing between between your own expectations and what other people might expect, and and that those are the parameters that make you less free than when you start a new um, album, uh, a new a new project, for example. If you write an album for a non-existent or a new project, you are you are fully free. Yeah. Whatever you decide is good. They, there is no expectation uh, expectation attached to it and and you're free to do whatever you want and even the craziest decisions you make you are allowed to make whereas if you have already carved the path with your band like i said you you don't want to disappoint anyone and and mm. it's good for everyone involved and so that makes it harder something that definitely does not disappoint is Calvary. It's a really good release. And I also think that it fits into your body of work very nicely. It's like a little, it's another piece of a mosaic of, mm -hmm. you know, what, what Colin is and what makes him him. <clears throat> it's, it's a 16 minute track, which is of course not unusual, you know, 
by now that is I don't want to say a standard thing, but you know it's not unusual. It has become a more frequently seen thing in music. <clears throat> Were there any particular musical influences on the creation of that project? Not really. I I I I I'm not the kind of man who who. Um... I don't listen to a lot of music or I'm not the exploring type that goes on a, in a, in a loophole of, of different bands and bands influenced mm -hmm. by those. And, and, and so I don't have files on my computer with, with, with things I like and, and um, that could potentially inspire me. Mm -hmm. I just sit down <laughs> and start experimenting and doing random shit with the things that are in a room mm. like in this case i just started with with collecting stones from around me when i went on holiday i brought stones with me from all the places i visited with my with my family and then when there were road works here in ghent where i live in belgium we have a lot of cobblestone roads like the big square um uh, stones that one of them also adorns the, the 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 cover of the album and i just threw them in my uh, trunk of my car and then i stashed them in the rehearsal room and then i started making sounds with them and started recording them and i took them to the studio and and then there was a, that was created and then i went from there and and tim our bass i'm a bass player um whom i recorded it with um uh, you know, followed followed uh, the idea and helped me to construct the 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 fundaments of the track, and then I just let it flow. I just uh, go from there. But like musical influence, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't really. I there's no. There are probably things that exist that are similar, but I don't know them. Hmm. Yeah. You have mentioned Tim. Um... And I'm very sure that as you've spoken about loving to collaborate with people, very sure that you also got some feedback by other people on that creation. How important is that feedback when you are doing something on your own for something to be published under your own moniker? Yeah, it's super important. Like I said, it all feels so random for me. I do things and... and, and um... It's good to have a a bystander to go like, hey, what you did there is interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of know like, oh, it feels good to be to me, but it also for other people, they like mm -hmm. connect with it or they feel like it, it's also interesting to them. A lot of the things I do would probably stay in the rehearsal room if it were not for the other band members of my other projects that walk into the room and they're like, oh, what are you working on? And I would go like, oh, I'm doing this. And then one of them says, oh, this is really interesting or whatever. Or sometimes they have an idea and, and, and they add something and then another project is born within uh, with some members of our, our surrounding uh, friends or whatever. Um, so it's kind of cool, like... You never really know what you're gonna end up with, and 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 that's that's the nice thing. Everybody of us is, is always working on different things, and for me, it's very important to have someone who who pushes me or holds my hand almost to 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 do it. Like I said, mm -hmm. and that's why, why I realize now that I I'm not really born to be functioning on my own. You know. Mm. Yeah, like. Like most of us are. I mean, like how many of us are really completely autark, not looking for anybody's feedback? I think that's also part of human nature. I think not in the sense that we want to be loved, but also. many of the things that we do are meant to be yeah. heard, be seen, be watched, right? Or especially you, you, you want like as a child, for example, you crave your parents to be proud of you or whatever. You know, you 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 crave a certain recognition. It starts off with you building a tower of blocks, and you you want to show your your parents like, hey, look what I did. And I think yeah. that lives in all of us. 
subliminally, you know, you want to you want to show people what you can do, I think, or I don't know, yeah. you know, yeah. or yeah. Idea, you know. Definitely. Um, yeah. and until the very end of your loved ones, you still want to be loved by them, you know. Um, yeah. I still remember my mom's death in December, uh, you know, we've gotten closer over the years again, and till the very, very last day, um, it was important to a certain degree, it was important what she thought. And uh, yeah, that's like human condition. We, we crave for for yeah. stuff like that. I have said at the beginning that we can also shortly talk about the US tour that you are, when this is recorded, are going to embark on soon. And when this is released, are finishing. Mm -hmm. um, how important is it for you as a band to tour the US because I mean like it's very far away it's a long trip you're away from your family for several weeks nevertheless how important is it for you and Amen Ra everything is relative in the sense of that nothing is really important I mean uh, <laughs> good, um, good answer first of all yeah, is it important to act? It, it probably isn't eh? but I mean like I said you, you also you have we always get mails and messages from mm. all over the globe asking, you know, it's funny, like when you do a, a, a Southern American tour, for example, the, the day you get back home, you get mails from the country you have, you have just played. Like, yeah, yeah. What are you going to play Chile or Argentina? We like we played it last week, you know, it, it never ends. But in a way you want to, you also want to 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 please those people that you know mm. would like to to see you and don't have means to travel or whatever. So mm. you try to you try to bring the milk to them, uh, mm. so to speak. Um, but what I really love about doing the tours further away from home is that it brings us a lot more closer again. Um, you mean that? Yeah. That's what I uh, what I think is interesting because we're um, like in Europe and in Belgium we have our friends or your know, our neighbors family everybody's there together but yet there's so many people around that we're not super tightly uh, together experiencing what we're doing in Europe or in, in in Belgium and as soon as we go further away from from our country we get we we get closer to one another because we we don't know a lot of people there yet or sometimes we don't really know the customs of the of the the country or territory or whatever so we explore them together and it, it creates a, a new a new bond it it reinforces our bond i i think and that's for me what is very rewarding on going further away doing the further tours financially it's not it's not interesting to do it um but long term it's i think it's good to to one connect with the 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 people who who are interested in what you do musically and artistically and long term it's also good for us i think to have these adventures together you know and explore mm -hmm. territories okay. I mean, like, as you've said, the moment you go on a certain tour, you're always constantly getting emails in general and from different places. Uh, has there been one where you say, OK, that was so unusual and so out of the, the regular scheming of tours or places where we go that uh, this is like maybe the most otherworldly or like the most outlandish uh, destination that we were asked to play? Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know, really. Um, nothing super out of the ordinary. Um, but it's always interesting to go to places that you haven't been yet, you know. Um, mm -hmm. and, there's, and, and the world is so, so, so big. We could we could do so much more than 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 what we've done before. Yeah, nothing nothing comes to mind of of really weird. I mean, for me, it's 
it's it's it's weird that there's interest from from South America or Russia or New Zealand. Uh, that already is mind blowing to me. Uh, that someone knows that we exist or notice that we we actually exist. So it's all uh, interesting to us. So we're we're waiting for the first Amen Ragik in Nepal or Kenya, yeah. Mount Kenya, somewhere, somewhere like that, somewhere strange. Yeah, that would be interesting, you know, to see how how. Uh, and it's also nice when you go to uh, further territories. It's like you, in a way, go back in time. Mm -hmm. So, like, I mean, like in Belgium or in in in, in Europe, we have uh, bigger concert venues and. We have established a certain amount of, of 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 size or whatever, and then when you go further away, you go back to the smaller rooms. Mm. So for us, it kind of feels like how it was like twenty or fifteen years ago in in Belgium or in Europe. So it's kind of it's interesting for us that we are still able to do those different um, uh, forms of our existence and, and at the same time you know we can go back mm -hmm. to being squeezed in a small van having super long hours to drive to touring with a comfortable tour bus somewhere you know we, mm -hmm. we still have everything that we know you know so it's a grateful uh place to be in so um this is out middle of march middle of may uh, what else can we expect from Amen Ra for the rest of 2024? Can you disclose anything at the moment where you say like, we're going to play in my garden in September on my birthday? <laughs> yeah, no, not really, not really. But I mean, it's 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 like a special year for us. It's like a, we exist 25 years uh, this mm -hmm. year. So for us, it's kind of, it's it's mind blowing to to like have to see it visually in front of our eyes like 25 years on Menera. but um i mean we have some special releases planned that aren't announced yet um so it'll all establish itself uh through this year but um I, it's like we're, we're we're a couple of years after an official uh studio album so now is a bit the time mm -hmm. of site side projects and the the solo projects and also every every one of us is is uh releasing his own bands and his yeah. own bands. so that needs its time to uh but then within there um we will definitely announce um uh, new releases awesome uh, and things to come yeah yeah so, Colin, first of all, thanks for that part of the interview. It's always a pleasure to talk about that. But you know that nobody leaves the Veil of Sound interviews without going through the infamous quickfire round. And I hope I did my homework correctly because, of course, I had to, to look up quickfire questions that I had not asked you. I hope I did my homework. Um, so, using this hardcore sweater as a starting point because for for many people amen ra is this wonderful blackened post metal band very ritualistic with lots of cool aspects but a lot of people also forget that you and the band itself also have like roots in the hardcore scene the belgium hardcore scene the famous h800 h8000 scene so um let's ask a few hardcore questions first H2O versus Madball. I, I would say Madball because I've probably never listened to H2O before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen Madball a few times. Yeah. And I remember one of my first CDs that I had was a Madball CD, Set It Off. Yeah. That yeah. Fast, the classic one. Yeah. That was around the time that uh, we, we tried to get our hands on, on some hardcore CDs. So it's it's interesting, yeah. Interesting that you choose Madball, and then I'm interested in the next choice. Uh, the the brother of Freddie Madball is of course Roger Mirrod. So I'll give you Agnostic Front versus Sig of It All. As weird as it may seem, I've never really 
dug dug into all of their work. I would say sick of it all because I listened to it a couple of times, but those weren't really bands that I really connected with. Yeah, I was very peculiar, and uh, like I said, the I had my own agenda probably. All good. Um, two Belgian festivals that I I'm very sure that. I'm... I know that you played one of them, but I also think I've seen you on the bill of another one. Uh, Dunk Festival in Ghent, where you've been also part of the online uh, edition, 2021, I think. Yeah. And the other festival is Grötzrock or Grusrock or however you Belgian Grusrock. people want to pronounce that. Yeah. I think you pl also played there, right? Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if yeah. you... Yeah. And and for all those out there, uh, the, the guys who did Who's Rock uh, just announced that they're going to do something else in, in um, the fall, I think, an indoor thing for like six or seven bands. Um, but if you could choose to play one of those two festivals again, which one would you like to play again and why? Oh, it would be Dunk Festival. Eh? We have a love for the, the, the Dunk Festival. Maybe because it's territory wise closer to where we are mm -hmm. from. Yeah. And we know the people personally mm -hmm. and they're extremely lovely. So that's a, that's a big help. Um, they have always been very, um, very kind to host, to host us. And it's a very warm nest and family to, to, to get into. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was always, always special when we played there. Yeah. And Ruzrock yeah. was more bigger, um, a bigger type feeling festival. Yeah. Uh, that also Which is was, also one of the reasons why it died. Could be, yeah. It was, uh, but I, I have uh, the utmost respect for people who organize like outside um, festivals because it's so mm -hmm. much work. Yeah. Preparation is, is nuts. And then it all depends on the weather of that weekend, you know. Uh, so uh, yeah, big uh, shout out to all those people who uh, who have the energy to still pull it off. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, it was more. I think Rustrock was more for aiming also for a punk rock uh, yeah. angle, uh, and that's less my 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 cup of tea. Yeah, that's also something that strikes me about the city where you live, like Ghent. I mean, like how. Probable is it that a city, I mean, like Ghent is not small, yes, but it's also not a big city. How yeah. probable is it that a rec that a city like that has two of the most important and still very different um, 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 music labels? I mean, like you have Dunk, which is close. I know it's not in Ghent, but it's close. Yeah, but, yeah. And then you have Consoling. I mean, like that is one of the most important probable things to happen and i think that's also one of the reasons why Ghent is so important nowadays i'm know. not sure whether you i'm sure that none of the two bands were a huge influence of you but nevertheless there are two bands that at some point uh have always or often been uh, connected with amen ra uh, or that i've seen very often dropped in the same sentence uh, neurosis versus isis yeah, then I'd have to go with Neurosis. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's an easy, easy choice. Um, yeah, they started the whole thing. Eh? They opened their eyes to the 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 sheer power of music, the sheer force that you could uh, you could uh, summon with mm -hmm. music. I mean. Uh, I really liked ISIS too. I remember their first tour they did. We 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 drove all the way up to Germany to 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 see the the first show of the tour. Uh, and with Neurosis as well. I remember the the first time I saw them very very well. Um, so yeah, they have inspired us very greatly through the years. Without them, there wouldn't be an that we wouldn't be what we are today. Without them. Uh, having their having made their musical legacy, I'm sure. Hmm. Let's slip in two 
non-music related questions. Would you describe yourself more as a workaholic or somebody who seeks a good work-life balance? Oh, I, I, I really uh, I look for a good balance in that sense. Mm -hmm. My brain, my brain never stops working, mm -hmm. but uh, physically, I want to be uh, home as much as I can. Especially mm -hmm. my kids uh, being like teenagers now, I think I have a good a good five years that where they don't uh, get annoyed by their father yet so um, i want to cherish that and also i wouldn't want to be seen as an absent father mm. uh, and i was talking to someone else about it just uh, today that what i noticed is that when you when you uh, listen to like uh, interviews with um, people who in the last years of their life or who are dying pretty much if you ask them what their regrets are one of them mm -hmm. yeah. one of the things that always comes back is i wish i'd have i i didn't work as much and i spent more time with my family mm -hmm. so for me that's like empiric material that's that's proven that science you know that this is the first thing that you presumably will regret uh at the end days of your life so that's what i try to emphasize to myself like you might want to uh, not work too much or not be absent too much so i would aim for the good balance there mm -hmm. that's what I try. and um, a little parallel to your your body of work as Colin himself and also as a member of Amen Ra. If you could choose two different or if you had to choose between two different kinds of lifestyle, would you rather live the life of a hermit, like completely alone, or as a monk in a monastery? Hmm. I don't know. Uh I I think I think uh, knowing what i've said like uh, during this interview i would go for the the abbey with the monks that seems like a, a better thing for me um to do yeah but sometimes when 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 life and the world gets so hectic you crave a hermit life yeah yeah so, but presumably that would only last for a while you know that craving mm. that sense of wanting to uh spend days in the woods alone for a while mm -hmm. so i would aim for the the monk yeah and the last one and i'm not sure whether you will be able to answer that because as you've already you said about yourself an eclectic taste but um two ambient or drone artists that came up while i was listening to the new song were Lustmord and Nordvarger. Um, could you say whether one of them was something that you duck at one point or another? I think I heard Lustmord, I, I heard one or two Lustmord songs in my life, mm -hmm. but I never heard of the second one. I wouldn't mm -hmm. even be able to repeat his name. So <laughs> not really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Nort Varger is like one of those ambient artists, um, very underground. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. Colin, thanks for your time. Thanks for all the cool answers, for the great insight into the record. And um, of course, we cannot wait to, to see you on stage again soon. And for all the Americans, if you still see that they're playing your, your city today, tomorrow or in a few days, don't miss out on going to an Amen Ra show. Never miss out on going to an Amen Ra show. Colin, thanks for all your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for having me. Yep. Welcome. Bye-bye.